What's up everybody? Welcome back to How It's Done. Today we got another good and informative video for you. We are going to be explaining what you need to do if you run into aluminum wiring in your house. Whether it's for switches or plugs, it's not the end of the world. Could be the end of your budget because it does get very, very expensive to um, replace devices when you've got aluminum wiring. But we'll go over that in today's video, what you need to do, what you need to be aware of, some little oddities when dealing with aluminum wire. All today on how it's done. All right, so at first glance, this plug probably looks just like a normal plug. Nothing too complicated with it, right? But once you actually pull it out the wall, you see the aluminum wiring and you realize that. Um, this is going to take a little bit extra to do. So for this one, they actually make what's called Coalar devices, which is distinguishable at the bottom here on the yoke. You see it says CO slash AL, uh, ALR. That's for copper and aluminum or copper to aluminum um, conversion. And on the back, you see the screws on the sides are the same color. Uh, it's actually a special type of metal coating that's on the outside of it to keep um, any sort of uh, deterioration of the metal or electrolysis um, or corrosion from occurring. And it, because they're both the same color, it clearly marks which side is the hot side and which side is the neutral. Ground is still the same color as it is. Uh, you can also tell it's that by, on the bag, it says CU-AL. So, yeah. So we're gonna go ahead and swap these out with these plugs. So for the switches, however, they do not make um, Koalar switches, to my knowledge. I haven't been able to find them anywhere. Some places say that the toggle style like this are in stock. Wasn't able to find them. So we're going back with a Decora style switch. You can see it's got the copper or gold um, lugs on the end. So that's not gonna work with aluminum. So what you're gonna need to do is get some wire nuts that are meant for use with copper aluminum. Again, you'll see the CU-AL, um, and that indicates that these are gonna work for a copper to aluminum connection. So what you'll have to do is get some copper wire like this and just make joints. You're not supposed to double down um, wires underneath the screw like this so we'll make these two together underneath one uh, of these purple wire nuts and then we'll do the same thing with the switch leg I will say these purple wire nuts are super expensive um, they're about eight bucks for two of them at Lowe's right now at the time of the recording of this video um, if you order them from Amazon be super super careful there's a lot of scams going on out there where people try and sell you what they're not selling you um, you can see this is listed as a hundred piece. I peeled the label back. Um, you can clearly see on the bottle it says 75. I took them out and counted them. Um, there are actually 74. So yeah, just be super duper careful. Um, same thing. I tried to order the plugs on Amazon a little bit cheaper than what they were at Home Depot. They sent me just standard plugs. So be careful. Um, make sure you're looking at what you're getting so we're going to go ahead and disconnect this and this power's already been turned off at the breaker so we'll take these off make some joints put the new switch on uh, with the cost of the switch and then the two wire nuts you're looking at almost 12 dollars a switch so yeah and if you have a three-way switch you have three different joints you're going to have to make um so yeah you're you're looking at about sixteen dollars a switch so it it, it is going to get more expensive um having aluminum wiring um than if you're just doing straight copper but uh that is what you have to deal with so all right so we've got the wires ready to have the wire nut put on them um you'll notice that these wire nuts have let's see if we can focus there you go these wire nuts have a little spot in there where it's actually got some no locks which is a um like a gel that prevents the oxidation between um, the different wires, the different types of metals. 
So we're gonna do, go ahead and just twist this on there. And you'll notice that I'm going from 12 gauge aluminum to 14 gauge copper. The reason for that is that aluminum wiring can actually carry less current than copper wiring. So 12 gauge aluminum is only rated for 15 amps. 14 gauge copper is rated for 15 amps. 12 gauge copper is rated for 20. So if you come across this, make sure that your breakers that you're sizing out are appropriate for aluminum wiring because you can't put 12 gauge aluminum on a 20 amp circuit. It is not up to code. Uh, it's not going to support 20 amps. You're going to have a fire hazard. So yeah, that's uh, pretty much how that works. So we'll go ahead and get this put back together. Put a switch on the ends of these and nothing special here because it's just copper going to a regular switch at this point so we'll just strip off the ends make the switch up all right so i just pulled this plug out of the wall and this is not a kolar device this is just a regular device a um, little bit older but this is what can happen if you don't use the correct devices um, you can see that the insulation has melted away on this conductor um, and actually it's pretty loose in there see yeah that's not even tight around the screw so it could be because it was two dissimilar metals it could also be just because it wasn't super tight um, but yeah this this definitely could present a fire hazard so we got I haven't even loosened it up and it's to the point where I can pretty much just pull it off with my hand. Yeah, so um, we're gonna have to take this back all the way to where the insulation is still good, so right here, and probably gonna have to make a joint a junction with a purple wire nut and put a piece of copper on here to connect up to the new device because <laughs> clearly this guy ain't usable.